No, maybe this week. Alright. Not this week. Put it off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Started. Uh, happy New Year to everybody. Uh, first meeting of uh, 2024. Tonight's Monday, January 8th, 6 p.m. Um, we do have something on the agenda, but before we get started, I just want to uh, remind everybody, and I know the mayor is going to have them on the silence before we start our city council meeting, but long time city manager Steve Raper uh, passed away December 28th. And, uh, I know Councilman Blackwell and Mike worked with him for many years while y'all all been here, and I believe that he um, had a tenure of about 16 years and was here during Hurricane Floyd and I think what the Imperial Center on Braswell, well, Braswell Library and um, Douglas Block. He had a great impact on Rocky Mountain, not only uh, physically, but with the people and, and set the tent and all that. And he went and did the same thing. Mr. Ray, what's the work? I know he was involved in, I, I wasn't involved in the city at that time, but I was involved civically, he was involved as well, but uh, I believe the services for um, Mr. Raper are uh, Saturday the 13th at Lakeside, and 
with or with or without that to handle all the arrangements that the buyer wants to make specific to Superman and Wonder Woman. So just keep uh, Mr. Raper and his family uh, and friends and, and colleagues, because I think we still have people there that can work with Mr. Raper. So uh, with that being said, uh, Mr. Manager, um, we'll turn it over to you. I know we've got an uh, uh, exciting um, presentation tonight. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. So uh, I'm going to introduce um, Kelly Ann Williams, who will provide an initial overview and also uh, introduce to the council and developers and their proposals for the group. Good afternoon, Council. My name is Kelly Ann Williams. I'm the Strategic um, Initiatives Assistant to the City Manager. Um, it's great to be New South Ventures, um, which are a development group that's active in Danville, in Fayetteville, and in Wilson, North Carolina. So please help me welcome them, and they have a presentation for you. How's everybody doing? I'm Dwayne Washington, um, as you can see there. Apologies, my other partner, Mike Nancy, couldn't join us today, but I also have Andrew Raise your hand. And Ben Moss here with us today. You know, we're... We're so excited to be here. I got to be real honest with you guys. I've um, been developing business for quite some time. Started right around about 2005 in Durham, North Carolina. Um, we had a vision then. As you all may know, Durham, just like most towns, uh, tobacco had left, right? And, then, and, and downtown was pretty dark. And my partner and I, we saw opportunity where people didn't see opportunity. And at, at one point in downtown Durham, we had about 30 buildings that we owned under the name of Great Product Development, our previous company that we owned. And so we partnered with the city of Durham, and we were really at the forefront of what you see in downtown Durham if you were able to visit there today. Um, and right around 2014 and 15, we thought, you know, let's take this show on the road. You know, Durham had got to a point where uh, to buy a property was just too expensive. It just didn't make sense. You know, so we started to look at other towns. Rocky Mount, Wilson, as uh, Kellyanne mentioned, uh, Danville, <coughs> and these are all towns that we have been in since about 2015. And now we're to a point where we have to stand in front of you all and say, hey, now it's time for the visions that you guys may have individually. We're here to make those a reality. That's really what we're about. You know, when people see that they want to run away from something, we're going to run towards it. And we understand that towns like this, towns like Wilson, they want to have their, their, their piece of the pie, if you will. They want to have warm butts, warm seats in their downtown. You know, and that's what we're here to do. I'm going to let Andrew take over more of the nuances of what we're really trying to accomplish here today. But I thank you guys for having us, and we're excited about the future here in Rocky Mountain. <coughs> well, good to be with you. Um, so Michael, Dwayne, and I all went to the same high school, and Michael and Dwayne were a little bit ahead of me. I looked up to them as they were doing the work in Durham and sort of getting things started. And uh, you know, it's good to be here with you here in Rocky Mountain and, and trying to think about the future of your downtown and our potential work together. So as Dwayne said, you know, our group is sort of working across North Carolina, a little bit in Virginia. We've got sort of a handful of communities where the active development entities, that's Rocky Mountain, Durham, Wilson, and Fayetteville. We're working sort of a development consultant in a number of, number of other different communities. Seen there kind of dark and blue stars. We did some work down in the Wilmington area, a couple projects in the greater Charlotte area, a couple projects up the western part of the state. I'll talk in more detail with you today about Danville and Wilson, you know, and you may have read a little bit about some of our work there, and we think that that's applicable to Rocky Mountain. But we know Rocky Mountain and Wilson are different places. We don't want to say too much about Wilson other than to say we think that it's a community that we should sort of grow together with, and that we think Rocky Mountain and Wilson have a lot to sort of put together on the table to sort of draw from the Raleigh sort of metro growth. We love Rocky Mount because you can both be as much as part of Raleigh as you need to be while have your own very distinctive legacy and identity. We think that there's a market for that. We think that people are looking to live in communities that are distinctive, that don't just feel like a suburb, but that they can still go back and forth. They can maybe have one person in the household who lives in a metro area and another person who lives and works next to their house. And they can kind of go back and forth over time. And so you'll look at a lot of the markets where we're working, and that's an active feature, right? If they're actively tied to these larger sort of economies, but that have a real distinctive characteristic, a legacy, a history. In Rocky Mountain's case, we love the downtown infrastructure. You've got great bones in Rocky Mountain. You've invested in your bones with your street state project, with your downtown 
sort of entertainment and sports venue, you made the investment, and so we want to sort of help you amplify those investments and continue to draw people to live in downtown Rocky Mountain. So Danville's one of the markets that we think is, is a really important analog to what Rocky Mountain can be. They're about the same size Danville and Rocky Mountain. We've been working in Danville since about 2015. As Dwayne said, there we sort of serve as a development advisor. We've been working with a, an investor in a local foundation that's really been looking to buy a lot of the old historic buildings in downtown Danville and turn them into housing. Downtown Danville has taken on over 500 residential units in the last 10 years downtown. Those are adaptively reused buildings. A lot of them are old tobacco warehouses or textile warehouses. So these aren't new construction projects. These are older sort of buildings that have been rehabilitated. That's what we're here to talk to you today about in Rocky Mountain is a couple of the older stock in your, your building supply that we think can be turned <coughs> into uh, newer housing and retail opportunities. Over the last so almost 10 years, the foundation and we have sort of built, gone to purchase and stabilize about $10 million of those properties and about four-fifths, almost 80% of that portfolio has already turned hands into redevelopment from where it originally started. We partner with a lot of other developers, so we don't go into a community and say, hey, we need to do it all. We look for others to partner with. We do joint ventures all the time with folks, both local and folks who are coming into the market. Sometimes we find local folks who appreciate having our experience and who appreciate the lessons that we have learned in Durham and other places. Sometimes you have out-of-town out of folks who want to get into a market, maybe not go to North Carolina quite as well, <coughs> and able to sort of help them get confidence to come into a market where they maybe not have the experience that others do. We recently sort of extended our commitment to downtown Danville. This is the River District here. Um, I don't want to get political at all. Danville is the site of a casino, um, and I know that has two sides of a coin, and I don't want to, again, no, no statement whatsoever. That is a community that has dealt with the impact of gaming on their community, and we've been involved as they've helped to think through that from a housing point of view. We're neutral on the actual sort of economic development play, but it is something that we've been part of in conversations about housing and how that can affect the community. So we've also been sort of in the middle we're hoping it's going to be a 15-year partnership in, in downtown Wilson. We began our work in Wilson a little bit later than Daniel, about 2017, looking at older buildings to sort of do adaptive reuse projects. Um, as we were talking, the Opportunity Zone program, which Rocky Mountain is blessed to have, I think, four of your downtown census tracts are in the Opportunity Zones. But the Opportunity Zone program came out in 2017. It turned out that Wilson's only sort of major downtown tract was where the old BB&T towers were there off Nash Street in, in downtown Wilson. And the city was talking about imploding those towers, the BB&T was going to implode those towers and just make it surface parking. So we got to talking to them about their, their interest in having the YMCA come downtown. We got talking to them about what kind of housing opportunities we were and what we had thought was going to be an initial adaptive reuse project like what we're talking about in Rocky Mountain became a new construction project. We saw the ability to invest in the YMCA to think about a, a public parking project that sort of connected to it and created sort of a, a mini block, if you will, that would really fed itself. And so that began what, what we call phase one, a demonstration project that frankly we, we thought would be kind of a nice phase one, and then we go back to doing older buildings and adaptive reuse projects. But then sort of through the negotiations with Carolina Mudcats began, and, and ultimately the stadium project that you may have read about recently when Wilson was looking to build a downtown stadium sort of came to be and will sort of launch the next phase of, of development. We know that there's some, some Friday night football rivalry between Rocky Mountain and Wilson, so we want to help Rocky Mountain invest in its same engines. You know, it may not be baseball, maybe it is. I know that there's been talk of sort of expanding baseball in Rocky Mountain, and we're happy to support that however we can. But if it's not, if it's sort of continued sort of investment and support of your existing entertainment system, which I hear is very well, well programmed and active, then we want to sort of help you do that and think about the next level of um, phasing and investment and the, the housing supply to support that. So here's just some pictures of what we're doing in Centro. We're, we're proud of the project. Um, it's coming in a little behind schedule. We're generally on budget. We uh, have started signing leases. We're doing it in two phases. So the initial phase of folks are going to be moving in in the next month. And we expect the completion in April of, of this year. 
the period of jobs for you. We really focus on having what we call kind of urban style housing products. We try to find sort of smaller units that are highly amenitized. So we do a lot of studio units, a lot of one bedroom units, some two bedroom units, but this project in particular is really targeting folks who are kind of on the, the first part of their sort of job career and then folks who are on the second half of their sort of work experience. Not as much a family sort of project. We don't have the amenities to support families, but we do look for a lot of sort of you know, 30 and younger and sort of 55 and older folks. And we're seeing a good mix of those folks who are starting to lease this project up in Wilson. The rents are anywhere from, we've got, I'm oh, sorry. Um, the rents are around 1300 to about 2000 is sort of the range right now. Um, the studios, we have a couple of, of affordable sort of workforce housing type units that are at different levels for the studios and the ones, and those sort of go down as low as 1200 a month. Um, but I would say that the initial studio rent is right around 1300 and you get to right around 2000 for a two bedroom. So it's market. Yes, it's market. The, right now, the agreement we have, we signed a specific sort of affordability incentive with the city, and so we're providing 100, sorry, 15% of the units at 100% of area median income, and an additional 10% at 120% of area median income. And we've done that and advised sort of other developers in that sort of model for workforce housing across the board, specifically with new construction. So we've got a project that we worked on in Kannapolis, North Carolina, just outside of Charlotte, and there we went for 50% at 80% of area median that was an aggressive sort of workforce housing project that we found an investor who was a mission-related investor. They were really focused on subsidizing sort of workforce housing and that level of affordability, and so um, we, we sort of pushed more into that. Um, oftentimes, we can sort of find some bank financing when we sort of get to that level of new construction. And so 25% at 80% is, is a level that I think the market is increasingly starting to accept for workforce housing specifically. I think for lower levels of affordability, sort of about 60% of AMI, I think there you start to see a market rate project sort of 10 to 15% of the threshold to still make the deal potential. So this is the, the sort of long-term plan. This is what not what we started off with in 2017 when we sort of began working with Wilson, the center of project that you sort of see there at the uh, sort of up there. There's Nash Street, you know, downtown Wilson and all that sort of the Nash Street sort of corridor. Um, and then in around, you know, 2022, when we started thinking about the master plan, we started thinking about what could sort of go around to support the Whirlingate Park investment they've made and then to think about expanding it. And so ultimately, our downtown development agreement with the city of Wilson to sort of see $212 million of private investment come along to support the public investments they're making in the baseball stadium and the infrastructure improvements. And that's something we, we like to think creatively about with, with cities, and we hope you know, this is our first sort of conversation with you today, but we hope that it'll be the first of many to sort of continue to think about how we can amplify your vision and where you hope to grow in the future. So I hit sort of the highlights, but just to kind of sum up before I, I take it to Benton to talk about the specifics of the project, I mean, why Rocky Mount? We've been sort of thinking about Rocky Mount since 2018, 2019. We sort of made some initial sort of partnerships to invest in these buildings that we're talking about sort of around the 1920 time, in part because you've got great bones. I mean, it is a, a great city. It's laid out well. The streetscapes are great. You've got walkability already between assets. You know, the I'm, I'm a fan of the railroad track. I know sometimes people have trouble sort of thinking about how you cross a railroad track, but I love it. I think when the railroad, when the train comes to town, you think about an active city. You think about people coming and going and all the commerce and activity that comes with that. So I think it's a great asset for Rocky Mount. Um, we appreciate that you've already reinvested in yourself. This is you're, you're not you're not scared to invest in, in private development and to think about the way that private development spurs the growth in the public interest. We get that. We've seen that. We want to continue that sort of with you, and we hope to sort of go on to do bigger and better things. And then, as I said, connectivity to the major metro markets and a distinctive identity. I can't emphasize that enough. There are people who don't want to live in Raleigh. They just don't. They want to live someplace different. They want to have access to Raleigh when they need to have access to Raleigh, but they want to live and work someplace different. And you have the ability to offer that alternative while still having access to that larger sort of market where people are necessary. So with that, 
I'll pass it to Benton, who is project managing this for us in town. I, know, I think some of you know Benton Moss, but he's definitely been a great asset for us here in town to sort of help think through these projects and apply a lot of the expertise he gained working in other development firms. And we'll talk to you through sort of the specifics of our proposal. As Andrew mentioned, um, I'm sort of the poster child for uh, for wanting to not live in the triangle but have access to it. Um, these projects are also special to me, not because of just the things that Andrew talked about, but because I'm from here. My wife and I moved back here. We love Rocky Mountain, so these are these are passion projects for us. Uh, <coughs> very special to us. So this is a map of uh, <coughs> now. Obviously, you all know. You know. You understand. Yourself. Um, our first project um, located on the Edgecombe side is 201 South Washington. It is the old Orange Crush bottle, uh, bottling plant, for those of you who may, may remember that history. Um, so it's, it's a block south of Edgecombe Community College. Uh, it's, it's roughly a block away from the Davis Locks. It's down the street from Lorena Coffee House, as well as the Five Points Development, um, all located right there in that corridor. As I believe uh, one councilman uh, mentioned, uh, on the hopefully future uh, Moncton Mill Trail. So we hope to see that connectivity throughout town, um, you know, taking us from downtown all the way to the mills and beyond. So that's our first project. Um, the second project is a couple blocks west on Southwest Main. It is the 200 block. It's uh, sort of the majority of the 200 block. It does not encompass the um, 248 Southwest Main, which is the old Tower Town building. Most of the, the rest of the building environment there, uh, just north of Station Square, um, just south of the, uh, I believe the new, new town development office as well. So um, you know, you understand where that that's located. And again, both these walkable to the event center. Um, we're going to be offering commercial retail opportunities in these projects that we hope will be fed from the activity that we see at the uh, at the event center. So this is where lo they're located. Um, we love the location, they're in the heart of downtown, and we think that they're going to be connected to all the activity that, that will be sort of filtering down from the event center and from, from the activity that's already started within the Five Points area. So the first project, uh, 201 South Washington, will be, um, it'll be a 16-unit mixed-use project. So 16 units on the second and third floor, roughly 8,700 square feet of, of commercial retail on the ground floor. Um, as Andrew alluded to uh, earlier, it's a historic property. Typically, with historic properties, that comes with um, it comes with extra expenses because they are old properties, a lot of structural uh, integrity that you have to address up front. Um, you are typically required uh, in historic districts to maintain the, you know, some of the elements of uh, historicity, if you will. Um, on the commercial side, I don't want this to get lost. Um, we have 36 units between these two projects. But we have roughly 25,000 square feet of commercial retail. That represents quite a few businesses that we want to locate in our downtown. Um, and so we don't want just people living. We want people living, working, playing, and staying in downtown. So this particular project has about 8,700 square feet. For both of our projects, we'll offer, um, you know, it'll be, it'll be a negotiated tenant improvement budget. Uh, but we want to incentivize businesses to come to our projects um, and to be, you know, sign long-term leases to be in downtown Rocky Mountain. We want to help them do that by offering some incentives in our budget. Um, to offer to the event center, we want to be uh, as high and finished as we can have, you know, within our budget. Um, but bottom line is it's a beautiful historic building and it deserves a, a new lease on life and, and we would love to, to start here. So that's our first project. <clears throat> the second project is uh, 204 to 232 Southwest Main. It's, uh, it's roughly 38,000 square feet total. It's 20 units on the second floor, and about 17,000 square feet of commercial retail on the ground floor. Um, we'll go back to 201 Washington. I will say about this project in particular, commercial, it's a bit more demisable. So we have a little bit more flexibility on the commercial side. So I, I, I talked to a, tenant, uh, a prospect that was interested in the entire ground floor. That would have been great. I don't think the timing was necessarily right for him, nor the use, use case for the business. It's a little bit more demisable. Uh, 201 or 204 to 232 Southwest Main, because it is a um, uh, we, we are combining several buildings together. Um, we can combine suites, but the demisability is a little bit less. 
Uh, but we do have several suites that are going to be um, various sizes, if you will, for commercial retail businesses. So again, 20, 20 units. Um, the majority units in both are one bed, one bath. Um, I'd say it's probably two-third, one-third split between one bed and two beds. Um, and and um, you know, in both projects, we're going to be looking at a mix of you know, food and beverage, um, commercial office, commercial retail, service businesses, you know, mix, um, a mix of, of different types of businesses to support um, commercial areas. And so tonight, we're here to sort of educate you a little bit about who we are, um, but also about a year ago, um, you know, the council and, and the former city manager put together a, a program to incentivize and entice developers to, to come to Rocky Mount to, you know, to plant their flag. And so we are applying for that grant that the former city manager did put in place. Um, we'd love to partner with the city. Um, it represents roughly 6% of our budget total between the two projects. Um, but we believe that you know, this, is, this is one of those things where we have an opportunity to, to strike the strike the flint with the, with the spark and, and see future development. This isn't just a one-time thing. We think this can kick off you know, successive development and uh, you know, this can be the start of many fun. So. <coughs> we'll finish up on your next steps. So we are sort of slightly more ahead on the South Washington project than we are on the Southwest Main from a design point of view. We're almost done with the South Washington design, just sort of final stages there. We have been talking to both lenders and sort of pulling together our capital partners, and um, you know, we think the first quarter you know, is, is going to be an important finish in that process. The Southwest Main may take a little bit longer, it's going to take us into the second quarter of 2024, but all told, the goal is to begin to on both projects in the second quarter of 2024. Um, you know, we think that we can begin pre-development work on our next project, which right now we, we lean towards the Taltown project on 248 Southwest Main. That is one that sort of we have a friendly group of investors who we think we can work with on that. And I think there we would begin pre-developing that work towards the end of 2024, probably the third quarter, um, hoping to kind of build on the momentum. We find that once you get rolling, you know, it's best to sort of keep those wins at your back and, and sort of having successive projects. The estimated completion of the two projects that we're going to talk to you about today would be second quarter of 25, assuming that we can have our sort of beginning in, in 2024, like we suggested. And so we would hope to have those units sort of up and running and then starting to really work through the retail stabilization at that point. Um, I will say that retail has historically been challenge in markets, you know, as we've sort of gone in over time, we find that if residential comes first, you've seen that at some level in Rocky Mountain already, I know there's been a couple of projects that have come on, online, I think that the food and beverage and retail is starting to sort of come back into downtown and we're excited by that, and we hope this will give a good boost for the sort of 24 hour sort of traffic for those types of establishments. Canapolis is a really good analog for us talk to Kannapolis was basically a ghost town um, when the city of Kannapolis bought their downtown back in the 2010s. They invested in a streetscape improvement sort of like you've done already. They sort of thought about sort of some initial uh, residential and put in uh, an incentive package to build some, some new residential. But they were able to lease up their retail downtown. I think it was something like 125,000 square feet of downtown Kannapolis during COVID. We've talked to them a lot about how they did it and what was the, the goal, and it was interesting. They focused on the type of retail establishments that are hard to sort of keep rolling in Raleigh. They focused on the boutiques, the clothing stores, the popcorn shops, the local <coughs> stores, things like that that are actually sort of regular sort of browsing type of traffic that we see in, in lots of communities and historically we think of as being part of downtown commerce. And they were able, because the price per square foot on adaptively redeveloped space was so much lower than new construction, they were able to recruit folks who just couldn't afford to sort of open their businesses in Charlotte. And so they sort of populated the downtown environment, smaller than Rocky Mountain, to be fair, but populated the downtown sort of retail environment in COVID sort of with this sort of strategy. So we're hoping to learn lessons from them, see if we can't apply, maybe even recruit some of the businesses they've started, that they found, and sort of 
show that Rocky Mountain can be that downtown walkable sort of retail community. We think that Ben said we have the right stock as well as what's already available um, to sort of help that grow. So we, we look forward to working with the downtown team on that and seeing if we can't sort of get people sort of growing their businesses in downtown Rocky Mountain. So with that, I think we're done with an official presentation. We'll be happy to answer any questions you have about the project, about us. Uh, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. It's good to be here. Any questions? The old built building. Yes, sir. Uh, when would you all include that? Is it part of your project as well? Or eventually be part of your project? That is the hope. We've begun sort of doing early stage pre development on that building, but we've tried to sort of sequence it so that we kind of bite off the right amount of this, you know, of this first sort of chunk. And so the first two projects, I think, are from a design point of view much, much further along. Candidly, that building is going to be a little bit harder to break up. Um, you know, being in a department store and sort of having those sorts of bones, it doesn't immediately lay out to residential in quite as easily a way. So we're thinking about what it can be and how that would work, what it would cost. Um, just a little bit more complicated project, but it is definitely on the radar. And I think that we have the ability to move forward on that in 24, assuming we get these projects rolled. One other point on that is that it's not contiguous to the other properties that we have at this moment. So there, there are a couple of <coughs> buildings that are in between. You have two buildings in between. Yeah, 204 to 232, then there's a couple, and then the Dow the, the, the So with the city investment, at what juncture uh, does that come into play? What, what does that mean for you that has to be able to go with the From Just from a financial or a capital <laughs> staff, um, what, what we would love to see is it's sort of the, the first... Uh, First to say yes, but the last money in. So the building's already built. It's the last money to bridge us to, you know, to, to, to start to start leasing, start operating the buildings. Towards the end of the project. Correct. Okay. The co commitment is the important part. As far as the vendors and investors are concerned, but I think we're at the capital. <coughs> so so they need to see that we're supported by the city. Yes, sir. I mean that's so the there's everything you want to have. Yes, sir. <laughs> jump without them, but they don't give us the parachute without you. <laughs> you mentioned um, the retail square footage <coughs> from the larger cities. Well, I mean, even with new construction, you can make it comparable to, say, a Raleigh or a Durham. Um, for, for the retail, to, to, for a company to locate, retail company to locate here, such as a restaurant, Talk about, we're talking about new construction, so yeah. much, much higher 30 bucks a foot plus for rent rates. Yeah. I mean, extremely high. Um, you know, is that your question, sort of what the yeah. rents would be? Or well, no, really the question is, you know, is it I want to see some activity downtown. I want to attract some businesses in the next couple to start a business. I mean, that's one of the hardest things yeah. to be an entrepreneur to start a business. And so, obviously, if, if you know, it can be attractive for business to come in.
have a hard time envisioning what a distressed building is going to look like when it's fixed up. And so we've talked about about sort of limited sort of shell development, both for commercial office, to the extent that it ever comes back, but also for retail um, as, as folks go. And that was one of the things that Canapolis did do a nice job of. They had kept the buildings pretty well um, workable as, as retail establishments while the city owned them. So they were able to sort of do some basic uptick, you know, three months of uptick, not nine months of uptick. So when somebody came, they could turn that around pretty quickly. So we'd like to talk um, about that more, and that's definitely something Clinton has been thinking through, is how do we sort of pace the retail sort of space development so that we can take on these tenants as quickly as possible. Uh, first of all, thank you all for your interest and uh, your potential investment in Rocky Mountain, because as you've shown, uh, you've chosen a lot of other places, but thank you for having us uh, on the map. Uh, also, over the past weekend, we had over 2,400 people in our downtown uh, event center. Uh, and so just to hear about the potential of what this or these potential projects will do uh, to help add to what we already have currently existing is very exciting and transparent for our, our downtown. So uh, uh, in that same vein, uh, hats off to our uh, event center staff. You know, they've been working a uh, tremendous event to be there, uh, talking about professionalism, and uh, we're excited about what this provides for those tourists so that we can uh, be able to benefit from those tourists and not have them eat in the middle of the States, you know, and, and not only in Raleigh, but just over in Nash County. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we want to keep them downtown <coughs> in the center of our Rocky Mountain, and also for our local citizens, having something extra to add to our portfolio of things to be able to have in our amazing city. So thank you all for, for being here and for your interest. Yeah. Yes, uh, thank you. about what's happening down there, but they're also waiting to see what's going to happen in those 14 communities. So while we're designing everything else, I hope we're going to be inclusive for those 14 communities. And I'm uh, really excited about seeing the great housing downtown, but if our 14 communities do not have livable communities and livable homes, we still kind of leave our kind of outside.
into the private sector and working on this with the recognition that there, there is this gap in the market for whatever reason. Our secondary cities in North Carolina don't get the love that they should from the lending community, from the investment community. It's not because you don't have deals. It's not because there aren't people who want housing in the Rocky Mountain Nash industry. You know, there's the demand is there. But for whatever reason, the institutions have been hesitant to sort of embrace that demand. And so what we set out to do with, with NSP sort of pulling from you know, Green Fire and Durham was to try to create confidence. And that's what we say. It's, it's a confidence model that we're trying to show the market. This is a place to invest. This is a place that's going to grow and flourish. And if you look at the communities that have done it well, it catches fire right down. And it's, before you know it, you've got multiple people coming in and investing in money. Deals slow at this point because you've been working at it for so long. But as soon as it sort of catches fire, you know, three, four, five years down the road, we have every expectation of Rocky Mountain is going to be on its way to what your vision is. We say all the time, we can't create vision for local governments. We can amplify the vision that you've been working hard over the last 10, 20 years to sort of push forward. That's our job. And so we want to amplify where you want to go, what is the future and legacy of Rocky Mountain, we want to help tell that story to the market in the places that we're working across North Carolina and the region to get people to come, live, work, play, invest in Rocky Mountain. I just want to thank you for the strategy of having blended incomes in the same property. I think that's so much more sustainable. And um, while we were excited several years ago in Durham, Durham is now working itself in a corner because they've not uh, made places and spaces in downtown build a market to investment and not a market to people, then we find ourselves challenged in um, creating a sustainable long-term growth and return on investment. And so I appreciate how you have um, incorporated that up for us. Understanding you got to make money. Yeah, you know, sure. and, um, and everybody doesn't have to live in the same place in the same way. But everyone should have the opportunity. Downtown is everybody's downtown. It's yes, not something <coughs> That's how it's going to thrive. That's exactly right. So I appreciate your vision. And um, if you brought it to us and you didn't have to come to the state, you were required to do this, you required to do that. So I appreciate that. I'm going to try to bring this back together, back to the beginning, I guess. So just thank you for coming. We've got to go down and take a picture with a couple of ball games. Meeting, just want to say thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Say, Manager, if you could, um, the grants that we're, that we're talking about here, we've got that paperwork for that. If you could distribute that to the council and the mayor, I'd appreciate it so we can remind ourselves of uh, details of that. And um, while I'm thinking about it, the mention of the uh, difficulty with Gold Phelps building, uh, I know in Nashville they have an uh, old department store that's now a hotel, which uh, we're, you know, we're familiar with that. <coughs> I don't know if that would work here, but it may not be work works in Nashville. Can I stay here or in East Florida? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, um, any other questions for this community hall? All right. Join us. Thank you.
All right, all right. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. All right. What's up, man? All right, all right. What's going on, man? All right. All right.